Welcome to the AFR Saints channel, where we provide you daily content on your favorite team, the New Orleans Saints. Do us a favor and hit that subscribe button. Be sure to leave your comments below and smash that like button. Who that? Field Yates over at ESPN has a new mock draft out, and it's a it's a two round mock draft. And I think like there's some things that every time I look at one of these mock drafts now, I'm looking for. And I think, listen, it's obvious. I say this all the time. I say it again. I I don't care what Field Yates or Mel Kuyper or anybody necessarily predicts, you know, in their mock draft. The mock draft is what it is. It's more just to see. Like who you think is available, who might be available in certain spots, and what position maybe a team might be targeting in a certain spot. And I think that's what's interesting because a lot of these guys that cover the NFL nationally are uh, are are plugged in to to these different organizations, and they talk not only to scouts but front office people. They may have a good idea of what these teams are are looking for. So Field Yates has Jaden Daniels going number two. He's got Malik Neighbors going six to the Giants. Um, when you look at the LSU guys. But it really starts to matter uh, for the Saints at, at 14. And the thing that for me is most interesting is Field Yates does have uh, the first three players in this draft being taken quarterbacks. He's got Williams, Daniels, May going one, two, three. Then he's got Marvin Harrison Jr. going four. And J.J. McCarthy going five to Minnesota. Uh, so he's mocking a trade there with the uh, with the Vikings going up to five with the Chargers. Remember, Chargers now coached by Jim Harbaugh. But he's got McCarthy going five to the Vikings and then neighbor six. Um, I saw this quote earlier today from Jim Harbaugh. And it was at the team's website there at, with the Chargers. He said that, uh, this is a quote, Jim Harbaugh. There's talk of four quarterbacks going in the first four picks. If that happens, then that pick, their, their number five pick really becomes like the number one pick in the draft. And I I like the way he worded it because it's a better way of saying what I've been saying for a while. Why I want the Saints to sit at 14 is because if you have the first four picks in the draft that are quarterbacks or five quarterbacks come off the board before the Saints pick, essentially that's great value for the Saints. But if in effect it's true if you're not if you're a team that doesn't need a quarterback and the first four picks off the board are quarterbacks, then really it's like the draft starting at number five. So while the Saints have the 14th pick, it's really like if four quarterbacks come off the board before the Saints pick, or maybe even five, depending on if Bo Nix ends up going to Denver, as a lot of people are projecting at 12, then the Saints' 14th pick is really like either the ninth or the 10th pick in the draft because you're not picking a quarterback with your first-round pick. So really you just got to get through eight or nine other players that non-quarterbacks to get to your pick at 14, which feels like you're going to have amazing value there. And you're starting to see this more and more, and you know I'm thrilled about it because this is the player I want the Saints to take. And Field Yates has the Saints taking Olu Fashanu out of Penn State at 14. We've talked about it a million times. I think the Saints have to go offensive tackle at 14, and Fashanu is the guy that I think is most likely going to be there. He, in any other year, could be the first Offensive tackle off the board, but in a year like this, with so many quarterbacks, with Joe Walt on the board as well, J.C. Latham, some other really good players, there's a likelihood that you're going to see a player, a really good player, fall, air quotes fall, uh, to 14. A player that, in another year, might be a top 10 pick first offensive lineman off the board. Same conversation we're having with Brian Thomas. In another year, he might be the first receiver off the board. He's just in a draft class where you've got Marvin Harrison, Malik Neighbors, Roma Dunze. And even though Brian Thomas is this tantalizing talent, you know, he would have been the first receiver off the board last year if he were in that draft. But he's a guy that you love. And you know, I think the same is true for Vashanu. But for me in this mock draft, the thing that was more interesting was what Field Yates did with the Saints at 45. That's the pick they have from Denver. And he had the Saints going with Kamari Lasseter, the cornerback out of Georgia. And he writes, the Saints restructured Marshawn Lattimore's contract late last season, fueling speculation that he could be a trade candidate this offseason. Lasseter would add depth there if such a move happened. He's sudden, confident, and capable in man coverage. Okay. Um, It would be hard for me to sit here and definitively tell you that I would hate the Saints adding a defensive player from the University of Georgia. 
but I would hate the Saints adding this defensive player from the University of Georgia at 45. And part of it's because of Lassiter, and part of it's because of the position. First of all, if the Saints don't trade Lattimore, and you've got Paulson and Debo back in a contract year, and Alante Taylor in year three, if all three of those guys are back, using the 45th pick on a cornerback doesn't make a lot of sense. You have so many needs on this team. And as I kind of like map out positions of need for New Orleans, I put offensive tackle number one. I have wide receiver number two because you only got two of them. And we can talk all we want about A.T. Perry and some of the younger guys, but the bottom line is you got two receivers. You got Alave and Shahid, that's it. That you know you can count on. Michael Thomas is gone. You got to add receivers. So tackle one, wide receiver two. I'm putting safety at three. Because no matter how much you love Jonathan Abram and Jordan uh, Jordan Howden, you haven't replaced Marcus May. Maybe those guys can play, but you still need another safety. I'd put defensive line for probably defense, interior defensive line more so. Uh, you, you, you like Saunders and Shepard and Brzee, but if you if you can find someone you feel is a dominant interior player, I love that at, at 45. Then I'd go tight end, mainly because you got three of them, but if they're, if the right player is there, I'm with it. And then I'd put cornerback six. And I, I think what's, you know, a year ago when we were looking at all these mock drafts for the Saints, I think a lot of us assumed, and look, Brian Brzee was a guy that a lot of a lot of people mocked to the Saints in round one a year ago, and they ended up taking him. But everyone that talked about the Saints last year before the draft knew running back was a spot they had to address. Kamara had been injured. We knew the contract situation. They added Jamal Williams, but you really felt like he needed a younger long-term option at running back. And they got it with Kendra Miller in round two. Like We knew that was something they were going to target, and they ended up adding Kendra Miller out of TCU. So I look at it this year, and I go, receiver feels like that position this year. Receiver feels like the position you got to target in round two because you're going to go very likely offensive line in round one. Receiver's your next biggest need. It's a super deep receiver draft. You should have some insanely talented value at 45 at the receiver position. So number one, I don't love taking a corner, but the idea of taking a cornerback in round round two. The other thing is, I don't love Kamari Lasseter. Lasseter, at his pro day, ran a 40 that was clocked as low as 4.63. Now, there were it was a variety of times from the 4.5s to as low as 4.63, but either way, that ain't what I want from a 5'11 cornerback. I don't want a 5'11 cornerback that runs 4.6. In the NFL, no thanks. You certainly aren't playing on an island if you're 5'11 running a 4'6, 4'6'3 in the NFL in 2024. At best, you're a slot corner. And that's where you've got Elante Taylor. Now, Taylor wasn't great last year, but I still think Elante Taylor's got a lot of dog in him. And you use a second round pick on Elante Taylor. So the only way that I could think that it would even make sense at all to draft a cornerback. Lasseter or not, in round two, is if one of the three guys, Lattimore, Debo, Taylor, aren't on your roster. And it sure seems like all three of them are going to be on your roster this year. I'm not saying you don't draft a cornerback anywhere in this draft or find help there. But you have so many needs on this team. Corner, depth at corner, isn't one of them. Now, if you're not going to re-sign Paulson Adebo, which I think they will, or next year you're not going to extend Alante Taylor, then address cornerback next year. It becomes a real pressing need next year. But this year, when you've got Lattimore, Adebo, and Alante Taylor, it's hard to justify saying, I'm going to use one of my top two picks on a position that isn't really a position of need when you have so many. So... um I don't love it. And if the Saints do go corner at 45, I'd be really disappointed. Uh, one other interesting note is that uh, Yates does have Mason Taylor, or excuse me, uh, Mason Smith from LSU going 60 to Buffalo. Mason Taylor! Wrong Mason. But you said it. I said it. But you I corrected myself. Wasn't well, talking about him. I'm talking about Mason Smith. Wasn't well, talking about Mason Taylor. I'm talking about Mason Smith. Mason Taylor! 60 overall, uh, round two. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.